Good day everybody and welcome to Campala Road. This is a video about installing a 9F TTS chip into this locomotive. So this is the decoder in question in the familiar uh, TTS box, 9F class. Um, and I've had this since May last year. Not used it, uh, basically because I didn't feel I was capable of putting it in, and I'll show you why. This is the loco I wanted to use it for, and the reason for that is Hornby did do a TTS version of this 9F, um, which I think are probably like hen's teeth now. I've not seen one come up for sale for quite a while. Um, this is not really my sort of locomotive because it does not have tender pickups. It's a dumb tender and it picks up from the eight wheels here. Uh, I don't think it picks up from the central wheel because they're not flanged. So this was a difficulty because obviously it means the DCC plug is in the loco and not in the tender. In actual fact the DCC plug is here down the front of the uh, motor block, whatever you want to call it, on the chassis. Uh, the smoke box is empty, so you can store the chip in, in there. Um, and this is a TTS chip we all know and love. <laughs> there you go. This is actually a burnt out one, one that overheated from a Class 47. Now I should point out that I've already done this and I didn't film it at the time because I thought I'd get into a right mess, but I didn't. And I found it a fairly simple procedure to do. Now the reason I was having difficulties or thought I would is because while the chip sits here, there's obviously no room in the loco body for the speaker. And as we all know, the speakers tend to go in the tender. The only thing I've done to this loco is put a crew in. Now tender is a railroad tender, uh, so it's false plastic coal obviously, but all this area is free for space. Unlike some of the more detailed uh, tenders like the Coronation class, there is a floor of the tender here where the coal goes. You can put uh, real coal in, but that only leaves this little bit of space at the back. And this loco, the whole tender is free, and that made me think of something else, um, rather than use this little speaker. Now having the uh, chip at the front of the loco would mean I'd have to disconnect the speaker, add extension wires along the loco body, put them through here, and then obviously resolder with the speaker in place. All very simple if you're good at soldering. <laughs> I'm hit and miss. Sometimes I can do a brilliant job. Sometimes it turns out absolute basket case. And I don't know why. I'm just uh, very hit and miss on it. One thing I did think about uh, was putting the decoder in this loco. Uh, this is Copper de North. Um, and again, it's a railroad version, so you have all the room in the tender here. But the plug is still up here, at the front of the motor block. So you have the same problem as the Franco Crosti 9F, where you need to position the uh, speaker in the tender. The other issue with this loco is that the smoke box here is much, much smaller than the Franco Crosti inside. So there's a smaller space to get the quite large uh, TTS chip in. Then you have to run, like the other loco, you'd have to run the wires down. And as you can see on this loco, I've already wired up the tender to improve the coupling, this sort of uh, touch coupling which uh, Hornby re relied on for a long period of time and does work when it's new but as it gets dirty and older it tends to fail 
and I've actually wired, as you can see, this tender in. So I didn't use this loco for those two reasons. It already has wires and the smoke box is much, much smaller. Now, um, I think I've already mentioned, I've already done this loco and uh, I didn't film it at time because I thought I'd get in the right pig's ear of it, uh, but it didn't. And it was surprisingly easy to do which means the other 9F could possibly be as easy as well, and I was uh, very surprised. So the GCC plug is here, the chip is sitting in the smoke box here. I've run two speaker wires along the top. They go down here. Now there is some space, and I assume there is a channel there for some wiring inside, and I assume that maybe something to do with the, D the TTS version. I don't know. Maybe the TTS version is all in the tender. Um, the only modification I had to do to the loco was cut a hole in the underneath the floor here so you can't see it. I have cut a channel for t allowing two wires in and then there's a huge amount of space for the speaker to go in here. So that gave me the idea of improving changing this one which everybody claim, you know, talks about, and I agree, is very, very tinny. But you pay your money, you get what you get. And I have one of these hanging around, a mega bass speaker, um, which fits into the tender. As long as you cut these lugs off, it will fit and sit very nicely in the tender, like that. These wires are very thick. So they're no good for connecting between the tender and the locomotive. I say that because one lesson I learnt uh, when I upgraded my um, Railroad Flying Scotsman, which was again just loco pickup, and I upgraded to tender pickups as well, is uh, you have to be very careful how you affect the coupling between tender and loco, especially these ones which are featherweight. They, uh, if you interfere with the movement at all, they just derail, especially running tender first. So you have to use a very fine wire and be very careful you do not interfere with the articulation of the tender on the loco. And what I'm going to do is, I said I've already done it, but I'm going to take the body off and the tender body off just to show you how it looks inside. Um, it was remarkably easy. and. Um, I touched wood and prayed to the gods before I did it, and when I put it back together again, it all worked. Couldn't believe it. Okay, using a torch to assist. Um, the original speaker wires are here. These two black and the red one. I've used blue tack at the moment because I haven't got any black tack or anything to stick the wires to the roof of the body. And there is a join where the original wires run out then um, some extension and I've used uh, decoder wire on that section there. There is a channel here that the wire can be pushed into and I've just held it in with a bit of blue tack there. There is a gap here that the wire can go through underneath the floor of the cab and then the wire goes into the tender there which I've made a hole so what I'll do is I'll get the tender body off and uh, show you what I've done with the speaker. I hope I can get this all back together again. <laughs> right, so body on. Fireman's fallen out. Um, tender off, or tender cover off. And as you can see, I have cut the lugs off and let's just zoom in a little bit. There we go. And yes, as I suspected with this tender, you can see where Hornby would put the 8-pin socket based here, I think, and then the circular area for their speaker. So with this lugs off, this fits perfectly. Uh, I chose to keep the wires on just in case I use this speaker for something else at a later date and I don't have any heat shrink so there's a little bit of insulation tape there and this is a decoder wire coming through from the loco. 
the only modification I've had to make to the entire loco was making a square hole in the uh, tender body, which I'll just zoom out a bit and show you. There. There. I cut that out and the wire runs through there. I've made it slightly larger to allow the wire to flex because I said earlier the last thing you want to do is f affect the articulation of your tender. They're not heavy and uh, they come off extremely easily especially running tender first. So uh, that's basically it. A little bit of blue tack underneath. Got a bit too far in there. Um, and that was incredibly simple. Uh, a lot of space, I think that's probably why it was simple. There's a lot of room in the tender and in the smoke box at the front of the loco. So a lot of space to play with, made it, made it easy. I uh, just want to say that if you haven't heard Paxo the Cockerel, he's very quiet this morning. But if you heard pigs in the background, that means the neighbours are feeding their pigs. So sorry about that. Right, um, all back together again. Fireman is back in. And uh, I guess a sound test is next to see what she's like and running quality. I haven't changed any CVs in this. Um, it's as it came in the box. Uh, I find on the diesels with these TTSs you need to adjust the well-known 150 to 154 CVs. Uh, with the steam locos, it's much more reliable. Um, this will probably be my last TTS decoder I will buy. No more said. Finally a few running shots just to show you the noise she makes and uh, it's extremely loud so you can obviously adjust those volumes they're all on the Hornby presets which is mainly a number four so I'm going to have to fiddle around but uh, just a few running shots thank you very much for watching hope you uh, found this useful and uh, cheers for now from Campala Road <laughs>